Well, hello everyone. Welcome back, guys. Hope you all are doing well. This is Mohammad Badruddja, and today we are going to solve lab number five from GraphQL API vulnerability module. So, if you did not subscribe the channel up to now, please subscribe it and share these as much as possible. So, without going further, this little disclaimer is always for you. This video and its content are only for educational and awareness purpose, and I do not support any unethical or illegal act. That's been said. Let's dive deeper to see what this lab is all about so we are going to perform today cross-site request forgery exploit over graphql api so the condition is here the user management functions for this lab are powered by graphql endpoint and the endpoint accepts request with a content type of x www form url encoded and is therefore vulnerable to cross-site request forgery that's that's a point that to be noted fine to solve the lab craft some html that uses a csrf attack to change the viewer's email address and then upload it to your exploit server you can log into your own account using the following credential so in this lab we are having a valid user credential username and password so let's go and we start it first of all I'm a straightforward actually going to turn on burp proxy on my browser and straightforward going to the login. Now we are on the login page. W I E N E R, this is the user and the password is Peter. Hit enter, don't save. And we are logged in. And as you can see, our email is wiener at normaluser.net. Wonderful. Now let's go to the burp suite and we can see this was the login request because the operation name as you can see is the login. Now the thing is the problem in the updating email functionality. So I'm going to try to change my email. Let's say cyber at sec dot radar. Update this email. And it's updated successfully. Wonderful. This is a legitimate uh, functionality that seems to be legitimate. But uh, under the hood, what it's doing, let's analyze that. So this is the request for updating email. And as you can see in this, in this request, there is a problem. The problem is there is a session cookie and it is specified two times. And there is no CSRF token. Another part is content type, which we saw in the lab description. Here you can see the application type is application slash JSON so that the data in the post request is in the form of JSON. That means it is actually vulnerable to CSRF and we need to check that. So I'm going to send this request to the repeater, go to the repeater and um, let's change this one. Instead of cyber, I'm going to say cyber1 and send this request. And as you can see, it's showing us that the email is successfully changed. And here I'm going to just refresh the page to see whether it's in effect or not. And yes, as you can see, cyber1. Okay, you can simply change this, this one with www form url encoded paste that okay and the second thing what you can do is because now the content type is not in the json format and it is url encoded so you need to change this query a bit to make this data for this post request so what i'm going to do i'm going to just paste that this is the query now, as you can see, this is in JSON format, so we need a change here. Um, I'm going to make it one liner. So instead of slash n, I'm going to say nothing. Slash n, I'm going to say nothing. Um, just delete all of these. Okay. <clears throat> and this one also. And one thing to be noted, because this is the in the JSON format, so we don't need this. Instead, we need, uh, because this is actually as a parameter and normally 
we specify multi parameter in a data by separating those parameters with the ampersand sign and instead of this i'm going to put here equal to sign so the operation name value is change email and another thing here from here another variable is started and the variable name is variables and sorry uh, parameter name is variable and its value is this so instead of that again i'm going to put ampersand and here i'm going to put equal to sign and let this value as it is so it will count this one not as json instead the value of variables and i'm going to copy this and go back to repeater and instead of all this i'm going to say query is equal to and this is going to be its value right i'm going to url encode this one and let's try to change this to cyber2 and send it again um it seems there is a problem query not present why um query actually it should be it should be once i did uh, url encode it actually encoded the equal to sign also and before operation there should be ampersand and before variable there should be ampersand because uh, percentage 26 is the url encoded value of ampersand and here also it should be equals to and this one also should be equals to right that seems perfect send it again and yes now you can see the email gets changed so if you refresh again this page as you can see cyber2 now back again that means that means it is uh, vulnerable to csrf and now what we can do we can generate the payload for the csrf so just right click on this request and before actually uh, generating the payload i want you to change this email so that you can identify whether it's working or not so i'm putting it xxx at sec.radar fine and now right click go to the engagement tool and as you can see i'm using the burp professional version because in community community version you won't be able to see this active this option engagement tools so i'm going to generate the csrf proof of concept and here you can see uh, the query is same everything is same variable is there and this is my email okay so um everything is good i'm going to actually take all of this control c wait a moment okay i will explain a bit here but before that i'm going to exploit server so the exploit server here you can see this is the body section that means whatever you are going to write here it is already inside the body tags so the first thing first we do not need to choose everything from here so after body uh, from here up to here we can choose or we can write type here okay um, second thing is if we choose this actually this whatever this payload is it's already taken from this query from this data right and it's putting in the form so you can see there is a form and the method of this form is post request and in the input field and the type of the input field is hidden and the name of the parameter is query so you can see here the name of the parameter is query and the value of this parameter is mutation up to here so all of these up to here so we simply just take this query this data and put it in the input tag and then there is another one which is because this is another parameter so this parameter is operation name another hidden field with the name of this 
and the value of it is change email and the third parameter here is variables and its value is from here up to here right so this this is as simple as that but whatever you see here this is actually just encoded values <coughs> So if you choose these values and go to the decoder and decode it, you will find the exactly same thing. Okay, the second part here is I want, I want to serve this page to the victim. As an attacker, I'm going to serve this page to the victim. And whenever through anything, through like by sending a link, by showing a link, or by showing a button so whenever the victim is going to click on it or uh, clicking the button or visiting that link the victim is going to be redirected to my exploit server and my exploit server is going to serve this part right but the thing is here if you see the input type is submit and the value is submit request so whenever the victim is redirected to this html page he will see a submit button and for our success we need the victim to click on this button but here what we want i don't want to show anything to the victim so as you can see the purpose of these input tags are going to be hidden because i don't want to show anything to the victim so that's why all these are the hidden in the hidden format um, and the second part, what I'm going to do, instead of showing this submit button and uh, assuming or considering whether the victim or waiting for the victim to click that button, I want this form to be submitted automatically. Whenever the page loads or whenever the victim is redirected to my exploit server, which is going to serve this HTML page. So instead of waiting for the victim to click this button i want this form to be submitted automatically and how we will do that you can manually type here uh, because as you can see this is there is only one form in this html page so its uh, index value is going to be zero so you can simply uh, type here something like this within the script tab sorry script within the script tag you can write here document um, forms and the form is going to be its indexing is zero zero means the first form of the page dot i want to submit this form and close the string script tag fine so that will load the page and once the page is loaded it is going to choose the first form of the page and submit that one okay so you can manually write it or you can go to the option and include here you must check this one include auto submit script so once you click on it and regenerate the poc you can see this is already added here so now first thing we are going to take everything within the body tags up to here and i am going to copy this come back to our exploit server paste it here and i want to make a slight change here because you can see here there are two script tags right so i want to uh, i want to put this one control x delete this one and i want to put that here okay it so that's perfect if you want to view this now let's see i'm going to view the exploit to just see the exploit whether it's working or not and as you can see the submit uh, request button is appear but it does not need me to click on that and it is the script is or the form is auto submitted and as you can see the email is changed now back to the lab here and if i refresh the page or just go to my account again you can see it took effect okay so everything is good but here because um, we already use this mail and we want to see the changes i can just uh, make this change to yyy and again come back here close this one 
um, back here go to the engagement tools generate csr fpoc and again include the auto script and just regenerate the payload right or simply what we can do back to the exploit server back okay and simply we can just change the email from here uh, y y y right and store this and just deliver this exploit to the victim and as we deliver this you will see we will solve the lab and boom congratulations you solved the lab so hope you enjoy the lab if you like the content please like subscribe and share and i am going to see you in the next video in the next module bye